Hey everybody, Chris here, and today we are doing an in-depth tutorial on Tinkercad. We are going to go from concept to completion. So let's go ahead and get started on this tutorial. Alright, so before you get started with any kind of 3D model, it's always a good idea to just get your ideas on paper. Now this doesn't have to be beautiful and you have to be this amazing artist. I find graph paper works amazing when it comes to making kind of any kind of schematics. Graph paper is one of the musts that I always have. I like to use either a really good pen or in this case a sharpie. But what I'm making today is I've got a bunch of brushes and I need to have some brush holders. And I want to be able to make something to where I can put a bunch of brushes in and it's easy to 3D print. So. My stipulations are pretty easy. Now I do have an older brush holder. So I do have this brush holder and it's kind of like one of those optical illusion ones where there's only one support in the back. I really do like this brush holder. So this is going to be kind of my inspiration. Now I'm not going to make it exactly like this because I kind of want to make it my own. But I can see here that it's got a flat bottom. It's got holes in the bottom here and then there's through holes in the top. And obviously there has to be some type of support. Now this was multiple pieces and I printed this a long time ago, but I want to make something like this. Now I've already sketched something up. I want to be able to make this really wide. So I was thinking about making it 150 millimeters wide. Now it's always a good thing to be able to have some calipers or a ruler. Now when I turn this on here, I can actually see 150 is about that wide. So it's going to be pretty wide and I want it to be wide because I want to hold a lot of brushes in it. Then I was going to have it 75 deep. So for 75, that is right about here. So it's going to be about this deep. Now I've got these measurements denoted right here and I was just ballparking. So even along the way, if I decide to change some of these measurements, fine. It's not that big of a deal. Now I did note that all of my brushes are smaller than 11 millimeters. So if I would make everything, every single hole here 11 millimeters, I'm going to be perfectly fine and be able to hold almost all of my brushes. So when it comes to drawing out your schematic, I find the best views are your top view, your side view, and your front view. I like to always do like a three dimensional view just so I can get an idea of what I'm looking at. But also I want to be able to have all of these dimensions written down so I get an idea. So now that we got an idea of all of the different views that we need to have to be able to make this brush holder, let's jump over to the computer and open up Tinkercad and get started on this brush holder. So after you've created your own profile in Autodesk Tinkercad, you will land on this page right here. And all you have to do is go to your top right corner and this blue button, click new plus, and then you're going to click 3D design. And that will automatically create a new workspace for you. Now, the first thing I like to do is I like to name my project because it gives you this, you know, weird little name every single time. So let's go ahead and call this brush holder. So I also have my sketch right beside me. So I know all the sizes that I generally want to go with. Another thing before you get started is some of the navigation. I recommend using a mouse for this. A trackpad is pretty difficult to use with some of these commands. So the first thing is when you right click on your mouse, click and drag. So right click, hold it down and drag around and that is your orbit. So you can spin around your workspace. The other thing is your mouse button, your middle mouse button, the roller wheel. So if I use my roller on my mouse to go back and forth, I can actually zoom in and zoom out. The nice thing is, is if I actually press on my mouse wheel, it will pan or move around for me. Then if I click and drag with my left mouse button, that will actually make a selection box. And that'll be very helpful when once we get started. On your top left here, you can see that there is this cube that says top, front, and all the other sides. You can actually just click on these and they will jump right to that view. So you can see left, right, and you can also click and hold. So if I left click and hold and drag around, 
I can move my plane all around as well. This is really great for just quick reference if I gotta jump to the front view or the top view real quick. You can click these arrows as well. Then you've got your home button. Your home just brings you right back to your original start point. Then you have your fit and view, and we'll get to that later. You have the plus and minus, and that zooms in and zooms out. Then the other thing which is super important is you can switch your views. So here, let, let's throw down a couple of shapes here and I can show you what we're talking about. So if I go to my front view, I actually already have it on perspective right now. So you can see that this is closer than the one back here. So when I zoom in and I go to my front view, I can see that this is bigger and the box is smaller because it's farther back. Now, if you go to orthographic view, and that's what this does, it toggles between perspective and orthographic. Orthographic is a perfect view of your objects without any perspective. Now, when I'm doing, you know, sketches of schematics that I've got drawn out, I like to stay in this view because the perspective can kind of mess with you sometimes. So for this tutorial, let's go ahead and switch it to orthographic and just keep it there. Then the last thing that I think you really should know is if you come down here in the bottom right, you see your settings. So let's click settings and it'll give you this dialog box. And this is where you can change some of the settings of the actual project. Now, for those of us that are 3D printers, this is where you can actually change this work plane to the size of your print bed. So I'm on an Ender 3, so my bed volume is 220X and 220Y. So once you have that, you can actually click this and make it your default, so all of your projects moving forward will always be at this size, so you know how big it'll be on your actual 3D printer. So the other thing is, is you can go to your units, switch to millimeters or inches, since a lot of 3D printers use millimeters, actually all of them, I would just keep it in millimeters because using decimal points with inches can kind of be difficult sometimes. So let's just keep it in millimeters. Then you can also mess with your zoom speed. You can make it zoom in fast or slow. I like to just kind of keep it right there in the middle. And then you can actually show your grid, which is this plane right here. I recommend keeping that on and then showing shadows. And it just shows shadows, which is you know, kind of fun to see. So once you have that, you can just close this out. Then the other thing is your snap grid. Your snap grid is how things are moving. So when you're moving it, it's snapping to a one millimeter uh, unit. So I would just keep it on one millimeter if you wanted to just free form and move it around without snapping, you can hit off. So to select an object, you just click on that actual object and you can see that it gives it a blue outline. So you can see right here when I zoom in, it's actually not going into where I want to actually see. So I need to fit this to my view. And that's where this button over here on the left works out great. You can actually just hit this button and now it's centered that. So when I orbit around, it's focused on that object. This is going to be super helpful. So anytime you have another object, so if I zoom out and I click on this and I zoom in again, up, oh, I can't see it and it's way over there in the background. So I can actually click this button and now I'm going to move around this object. This is very helpful and I use this a lot. And the keyboard shortcut to be able to do that is F. So if I zoom in here and if I hit F on my keyboard, there we go, I move over to the cone. And then I can orbit around that. So let's go ahead and I wanna select all of these. So I'm going to just click and drag a box all the way around to everything. And you can see that I've got this big box all the way around them and they're all highlighted light blue. That means I've got them all selected. So I don't want them here, so I'm just gonna hit delete. And then let's hit the home button over here. Now we're on the home, home view. And over here on your right side, you've got a panel of all of your basic shapes. You can actually change this drop down to change it to other shapes that are already pre-made. So you can see here are some hardware, design starters. There's some really cool things in here like a pill, letters, 
and you can kind of toggle through here and see the different types. So I recommend kind of going through here to just kind of see some of the things that are in all of these different panels. But we're going to stick in basic shapes for this whole tutorial. The next thing is we have the work plane tool and I'll get into that later. And then we have the ruler tool and we also have the notes tool. So first I want to just drag a box over here. So I'm going to grab the cube. I'm going to click and drag. And wherever I let go, it's going to drop it on our work plane. And you can see it is already highlighted. And when you drop it, you can see numbers automatically showing up. And those are your dimensions. Let's go ahead and zoom in. And I'm going to go ahead and hit F. And now I'm centered on this object. Now there's a few things that you need to know for the navigation of Tinkercad. When you have an object, there are a bunch of little things all around these shapes. Now. The first thing is these little arrows with the, the curved arrows. These are your rotations on the different axes. So you can see if I just click this, I can rotate my object. Then if I click on this one up here, I'm rotating it on this axis and this one on this axis. Now when you're rotating, there's something that is very helpful. If I am actually inside the circle, so you see that circle that shows up, if my mouse is on the inside of it, it will actually snap the rotations. So it's an even amount. And then if I move my mouse outside of the circle, it goes to the specific degrees. So if you're trying to get something to say 30 degrees, you can just drag it this way. And the nice thing is, is you can also just click on that number and let's say 30 and then hit enter, and it automatically will rotate it to 30 degrees. So for this, I actually want to bring it back, so I'm going to move out here, and I'm gonna to go to negative 30 degrees, and then we're right back to where we started. Now to move this box around, all we do is we click in an area where there's none of these little icons or nodes. So I'm gonna just click on the red right here, you click and drag and it will move it along that plane that it is sitting on. Now if you notice, I can't move it up. Now what you do to move it up, you see this little arrow and you can click and drag and move it up that way. Now a nice thing to know is you have your work plane and something is suspended. You can actually drop this down onto the work plane. So all you have to do is hit D for drop and then it will just drop it right there on your work plane again. Now, you can also click on these white corner nodes. If you just click on it once, so once I have that clicked and it's red, I can click on any one of these numbers, and let's say the 20, let's make it wider and hit 40. So I have 40, and then I can hit enter. So now that is a 40 by 20 cube. And the nice thing is, is let's say that I want this to be 40, and the other one a little wider, you can hit tab and it'll jump over to that one and I can hit 50 now. So now I've actually got this to the right size that I wanted. Now to make it taller, same thing right here. If you see, you can see the height right there. I'm going to click on that node. Then I'm going to click on the box and let's say I want this short. So I'm going to say 10. So there we go. So the other thing is, is these black nodes. I can actually click on the black node and I can still type in here 50, but if I kind of want to freestyle it, I can just click and drag it and I can make it whatever size I want. So I can click here, drag this, and I also can click on the height and just click and drag. Then some very useful things is you can click on the corners and drag both dimensions at the same time. So let's go ahead and delete this one and bring in a perfect cube again. And I can click on this corner, I can hold shift and click and drag, and it will scale everything perfectly for me. Or, let's say I want to make this wider, but I want to keep this center. If you hold your, your alt key, or option, and click on that, it will actually scale it proportionally on each side. This is very helpful sometimes. So now we've got the basics down, let's go ahead and get started with our brush holder. All right, real quick, I just gotta say thank you. Thank you to all of these amazing people for supporting me on Patreon this month. 
If you want to be like these awesome people, you will get exclusive access to all of my private Discord channels where we talk about 3D printing, painting 3D prints, and honestly everything else in between. But you'll also get access to all of my behind the scenes content on Patreon and be able to see some of the stuff that I'm working on right now and some of the videos that are coming up. So if you're interested, I'll put a link below. Other than that, let's get back to this video. I've cleared the entire workspace and we're ready to get started on our brush holder. Now, the one thing I will say, I would just follow along when you're just getting started and just put in all of the same measurements that I'm putting in, just so you can kind of get comfortable with this program. To start out, I'm going to go ahead and bring in a cube. So I'm gonna just drop it right here in the middle. And I'm looking at my line drawing that I did of how I want this to look. And I've got the rough measurements already laid out. So I'm just gonna follow along with that. So the height of this is going to be eight millimeters. So I'm just going to type in, I'm gonna click on this and then click over here and hit eight and hit enter. Now it's eight millimeters tall because we're gonna work on the base first. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to click on the red corner and I want this to be 150 millimeters wide by 75. All right, then I hit enter and I'm gonna move this right in the middle of the plane again and that is going to be the size of our brush holder. So now what we're going to do is make the holes for the brushes to actually go in. So I'm going to grab a cylinder right here. So I'm just gonna click and drag it and bring it right here on the workspace. Now, I've already measured a lot of my brushes and it seems like almost all of my brushes, except for some of the bigger ones, will fit within an 11 millimeter hole. So I'm just going to click here on the corner and type in 11 and then go to the other one and by hitting tab and hitting 11 again, and there we go. So there is our 11 millimeter hole for our brushes to fit into. Now I'm gonna go to the top view and I am going to put this right up here. Now, first, what I'm going to do is I wanna make sure that I can get this even. So, now that we're on the top view, I need to align this to both corners, and then I'm gonna move it out a certain amount. So, what I'm gonna do is, like, let's go ahead and make it not aligned. And I'm going to click and drag a box around both of these. So now they're both selected. I'm gonna go right up here to the top of the menu bar and I'm going to click this align button or you can hit L. And here you can see that there's these little nodes that show up. Now this is where it's going to align to. So I actually want this to align to this edge and this top edge. So if I click this little node it will automatically move this to the edge. And then if I come over here to this one, I'll click it and it moves it right there. So now it is perfectly aligned to that top corner. To get out of your aligned mode, all you have to do is click in a, a blank area. And there we go. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to zoom in here. So if you remember, all I have to do is hit F and it'll move me right over here and I want to move this evenly. So when you click and drag in any of the area of the object, you can see that these numbers are showing up. So I am going to move this in three millimeters to give me a little bit of an edge on it. And there we go. Now I need to duplicate this. I need to copy and paste it or duplicate. So to copy it, you can come up here into the top left corner and click this copy button or control C or command C depending on Windows or Mac. Now you can paste it or, and this is control V or command V for pasting. And you can see that it actually creates an object and pastes it right there for you. But we don't want that. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I'm gonna click it again and I'm going to click duplicate. Duplicate and repeat is control D. So I've duplicated this and now it doesn't look like it's there. But if you see here, when you click and drag it away, it actually created it in the exact same place. So let's go ahead and delete that. And I'm going to duplicate it one more time. 
Now what I'm going to do is move it straight down. Now, see how I'm clicking and dragging and it's moving everywhere? If I hold shift on my computer, it will lock it to only the X and Y plane. So it's either going to go Y or X. So I'm going to move this straight down while holding shift and let's say 13 is my number. That's the gap I want to have. Now if I go here again and hit duplicate again, it will keep repeating the space that I just moved it to. So let's just keep going. Oh, and it looks like that is too much. So I'm going to hit delete. So having all of this wasted space is something I don't want to have. But I am going to stagger these. So let's see what that looks like. So if I click on all of these, I can hold shift and keep clicking and it'll select all of the ones I click. Or I could click and drag and it'll select everything. But if I don't want that, I can hold shift again and click the spot that I don't want. So now it's just selecting these, as you can see. Now if you accidentally move it, you can come up here to your undo and it'll move it right back to what you just had it at. Or it's control Z or command Z. Now I can either duplicate this or I can hold alt or option and drag. So I'm going to hold that and it will actually copy it for me. So I kind of want to just see what looks good here. It doesn't need to be perfect. So I kind of like that. I want these to be staggered like that. Now I'm looking at it and I'm like, hmm, maybe this wasn't too big. So now I'm going to select all of these again. I'm going to hold shift and click on the box. So it deselects that and now I only have my cylinders. And I'm going to come up here to duplicate again. Now I'm going to move it and hold shift. And it looks like that's my perfect spacing. So now I come back up here and hit duplicate again. And it will keep doing it for me. And there we go. So now that I'm looking at this, it's off center a little bit. And this is one thing that we can do. So I am going to take all of my cylinders and I'm going to go to my front view. And I'm going to click and drag a box around my cylinders. And I'm going to come up here and hit group. So I'm going to group all of those objects as one object. So now, when I click on one cylinder, it selects all of them because they're all grouped together. So let's go to our top view and let's select a box around everything and let's align this. So I'm going to come up here to align and I'm going to align it to the center. So I'm going to hit this center and then if you see this one is grayed out and that means it's already centered because if I click up here you can see now it's not grayed out and the top is grayed out. So let's click it back here and now it is all centered up. So now I have all of my holes done and I'm ready to actually cut them out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click on the cylinders and you can see your little shape dialog box that comes up. You have two options, solid or whole. So we're going to go ahead and click whole and that enables us to cut anything out that we group together. So I'm going to now select everything now that those are holes and this is a solid, and I'm going to group it together. And there we go. So it automatically cuts everything out, and we have our shape of our plate that the brushes are going to go through. Now, the next step is we need to be able to make some braces for this brush holder to be able to hold the second shelf. So I'm going to go ahead and use this round roof over here. I'm just going to drag this over here, and now I want it to be vertical, so I'm going to kind of come over here on the side and I'm going to turn it by grabbing that rotating icon. Now it's in the floor, so what I can do is I can hit D for drop and it will automatically move it up. So now what I'm going to do is I want to place this here. So it's cutting through, and I don't really want it to cut through right there. I want to actually set it on this surface. Now this is where I would use my work plane tool. 
I'm going to go ahead and click work plane and then I'm going to click on the top surface of this and you can see how it is actually created another plane on top of the surface of this holder. Now I can hit D for drop and it will move it up to set right on top of that cube that we made. Then if I want to get rid of this, all I have to do is click my work plane tool again and then click anywhere off of it and it will bring it all the way back to where it was. So let's go to our top view and now I'm just going to freeform this. I'm going to hold shift and click on that corner and just drag it to where I think it's going to fit. And that looks pretty good to me. So to make sure that I actually have this properly aligned, even though it looks like it, I'm going to click and drag a box around it, go to my align, and I can see it's gray. So I have it aligned. So I'm going to now hit my duplicate. I'm going to move this over to where it looks like it's centered. And then I'm going to hit my duplicate again, and then again, and again. So I'm looking at it with this design, these are going to be a little off, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. So now we need to duplicate this and move it to the top so we have the top part of our brush holder. So I wanted this to be 80 millimeters. So first what I'm going to do is I am actually going to duplicate this and then I'm going to click on my height because I don't want this as thick for the, the top part. The base I wanted thick, but this one I don't. So I'm going to hit five millimeters and it's going to be shorter. Now I'm going to move it up, but first let's move to the front view and here we go. So I'm going to look to the right here and bring this up 80 millimeters. And there we go. Now I can grab these half cylinders by dragging a box around it. And then I'm just going to bring them all the way up. But I need to see where it hits. So I'm going to hit the front again. And then bring it all the way up until it's touching. And there we go. So now I want all of this to be the exact same object. So I'm going to drag a box, click everything. And I'm going to go ahead and hit group. Once it's grouped, you'll see all of it's the same color, and there we go. So the last thing we're really missing is we need a base for this, because if I actually start putting all my brushes in this and then I lift it up, they're all going to fall through. So this is going to be really easy. All we have to do is go to the top view, drag a cube in. I'm going to put it right here in the corner. I'm going to click and drag all the way out to cover up all of those holes. Then I'm going to go to my front view again and drag this down, let's say, to two millimeters thick. And now it's got a nice flat bottom on all of those holes. But it's a separate object. So what we got to do is just select both of them. So I'm just going to click and drag a box around it, hit group, and there we go. So now we have a fully finished brush holder for our brushes. So the best thing about this is, is I actually designed this with 3D printing in mind. This can be printed support free. So all I'm going to do is rotate this on its side. Now I hit D for drop, and now it's on the plane. Now this will print perfectly without supports. Now the last step is, how do we get it out of here and into our slicer so we can 3D print it? And all you do is you click on your model, and you click export right here on the top right corner. Then you'll have this dialog box. So you can download it or 3D print it. If you use any of these softwares like Astro Print or any kind of cloud printing that are any of these, you can send it directly to your printer. But I don't. I'm going to just go ahead and download this as an STL. 
You can actually download this as an OBJ or an STL when you're 3D printing. If you're a laser cutter, you can also download an SVG of it. But before you click on which one you want to download, you need to figure out, do you want to put everything that's in your design into one STL, or do you just want to export out what you have selected? For this, I'm just going to have the selected shape, even though there's only one design in here. So we click STL, it will prepare the model, and it will give you the STL. So now that we actually have the STL, let's jump over to Cura and get it ready for 3D printing. I went ahead and dropped the model in Cura, and I do know that when I'm printing circles like this, I don't need any supports. So even though it is red right there saying I need some, I know I don't. So I'm just going to go ahead and slice this at a 0.2 millimeter layer height, and it's gonna take 11 hours. Now that I have all of this sliced in Cura, I'm gonna go ahead, throw it on an SD card, hit print, and we can see the final results of our 3D model that we just made of a brush holder. So Tinkercad is an amazing piece of software, and you saw how quick it took us to be able to create something like this. I mean, it's perfect. It's simple and perfect for what I was needing. So if you'd like to see some more tutorials like this, please let me know in the comments. Other than that, I wish you a great day, and I'll see you guys in that next video.